Hey guys, so one of my ultimate dreams is finally coming to life. Having my telescope under very dark skies in a remote observatory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a beginner setup at home for our videos and all that and send my big rig to Utah Desert Remote Observatories. And I cannot wait. So it might sound easy, but you need to make sure your telescope is fully ready before you send it away for like, you know, hours away from your home. So I wanted to make sure that I shared uh, what I did to my telescope uh, with you guys in case you wanted to also uh, host your telescope somewhere else. So there are two sections, I would say, um, about things that you have to make sure it's ready for remote. One is the things you have to buy just for that. And the second one is what you have to modify. So what you already have, but have to ensure it's ready for remote. So in my case, I had to buy a few things. So the first thing I bought was a peer extension. So this makes my telescope higher on the tripod, so it's less likely to hit the tripod legs. So even though at the observatory there is supposed to be a pier, uh, for now, at the beginning, I'm gonna have a tripod. So I want to make sure nothing happens to the camera or telescope when slowing to the meridian and all that. So uh, that's why I wanted to make sure that I had a, a pier extension on there, which uh, will make any hitting on the tripod much less likely. So I do recommend a peer extension if you plan to put your scope somewhere else and you won't have visual sight on it when it's close around. I also had to buy a UPS box. So this uh, is just a box with several outlets and from there there is just one cord going to the AC outlet. So this ensures that if there is a power outage, maybe for like five seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, your stuff will still be powered because this has a built-in battery in there. So you don't want to lose your imaging run in case the power went off for like five seconds. So this is a good thing to have just in case. And it's not too pricey. I think it's around like 60, 70 bucks. Uh, so it's, I think it's worth it. Now talking about power, uh, I also had to buy a remote power switch. So I bought this one, but I'm actually going to return it. Uh, I don't think I will need that. Um, so with a remote power, uh, switch, you can you know, turn on and off your power from anywhere in the world. So I won't be using this because I uh, use the Pegasus uh, power box and I can just use that as long as my NUC is still on. So if my NUC, uh, my NUC computer is on at all times, then I can just turn everything off using the Pegasus box. So I will for now use that. So one more thing I had to buy was an Ethernet unmanaged switch. This I have not installed yet because uh, the only uh, cable I have for the internet goes from the NUC directly to the Ethernet port at the observatory. Uh, but if you have several uh, Ethernet cables, um, the NUC, the mount, uh, you would need one of these um, to have several ports in the same connection. So this I might keep and add it later on if I decide to add uh, more Ethernet cables. One thing I had to buy for my case specifically is an AstroMitch uh, MPG2 box, um, which sends GPS and um, temperature data to the mount in real time, uh, in this case for the 10 micron mount, and also it connects to the power port so I can turn on the mount uh, remotely if I have to. That's very important because that's my only way to turn on the mount remotely, uh, even though I think through Ethernet I could do that with the wake on LAN feature, but I haven't tried it yet. Okay, this I have to buy at some point. It's just very expensive, so I'm gonna wait a bit, but eventually I'm gonna have to buy a flats panel. Um, for now, I'm just going to do sky flats and I will park the telescope horizontally so that the dust does not get in the optics, but eventually yeah, I will have no choice. I have to buy a flats panel to cover the scope and to take flats anytime. Next, I've been dreading this moment forever. I have never used a dew heater in my life. Living in Vegas, it's so dry but there I will definitely need a dew heater, both for the telescope and for the small guide scope. So I bought two of them, uh, one large one and one very small one. So now both the guide scope and the main telescope have a dew heater on them. It feels very strange to use a dew heater after many, many years of imaging without one, but it's a price to pay. <laughs> One more thing I bought is a security camera. Now, I don't really care about security itself. I know it's safe over there, but I love to see the telescope moving around on my phone uh, in real time. And I think it's going to be great also to have this for uh, some videos in the future. So I bought a cheap wise camera. It works really well and you can have a live view 
uh, through the Wi-Fi anytime. And also it's a great thing to have if you think your telescope might uh, hit the tripod leg or the pier or whatever and you want to check on it uh, whenever you want. If you do this, make sure you deactivate the IR lights because those might affect your guiding. So I turned off all the IR lights on this camera. And lastly, what I had to buy was uh, more filters. Uh, I, I had a, a you know, huge filter wheel for the past two years, but I only had SHO filters in there. But I had to make sure I finished my set before I sent it over there and bought uh, the LRGB filters. And now I have a full set of uh, seven filters, which is great. I had some issues at the last second with a filter wheel getting stuck in between two filters. Um, so that was not fun, but it's very random and for now it's fine. So I guess I'll just wait and see what happens with that. So these were the main things that I had to buy to make my telescope ready uh, remotely. Now, there are more things that I had to do to prepare my scope to be you know, glitch free or issue free uh, when I'm like hours away. So the first thing that I had to make sure of was that the Nuke uh, computer on top could start remotely. So what I did was I just had to change the setting uh, in there. So I had to connect my, my Nuke to the TV behind me. And then I had to go into the boot on um, the boot screen, whatever, and change the setting so that the Nuke would automatically start uh, powering on whenever it's plugged in into power. So for example, right now, if the, the power just goes off and on again, the NUC will automatically turn on by itself, which is very important because the NUC connects to everything else. And then I had to make sure that my tilt and back focus were perfect before I set it out there. Now this, I made a huge mistake. I spent hours and hours and hours for several nights in a row trying to perfect my tilt. I had a tiny bit of tilt and I wanted to make sure it was perfect. And of course I completely messed it up and my tilt is 10 times worse so now my, my tilt is crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I have to find a way to make sure it's, it's perfect. I probably have to buy one of these uh, tilt um, adapters online, which is going to be very expensive and annoying, but um, I cannot have tilt remotely. There's no way. And two more things I had to make sure were ready. First is um, the cables, so the cable management. So I used sleeves um, to make sure that my cables were tidy and will not get stuck around. So I already had a, a sleeve from a long time ago that goes from the Nuke to the camera, but now I added a new sleeve to, uh, you know, from the Nuke to down to the ground. So now I have just two cables, one camera to Nuke and one uh, in the sleeve. Uh, there are four cables in the sleeve that goes from the Nuke to on the mount slash power. So the, I technically only have two cords landing around, which is, I think, good. And the very last thing is cleaning. So I made sure that everything was clean, the filters, the lens, everything was dust free uh, using both a cloth and a air pump. And uh, I think this was very important to do. Um, and yeah, I think that was pretty much it. So now I, I feel like my telescope is ready. So I'll have a video coming up uh, soon after this one where I uh, show you how I install my equipment there. And I think it's going to be a very cool video, so be sure to watch that. And uh, yeah, so the, the remote place is called Utah Desert Remote Observatories. And it's a new observatory that opened up in southern Utah. It's about three hours away from me, and I think it's uh, an amazing place. I've been there a few times before during construction, and um, the honors are great, and the location is perfect. So um, if you guys want more info, I'll have a link below to the website. And so be sure to check it out as well. And so I hope this quick video was useful for you guys. I mean, I, just in case you plan to put your scope somewhere remotely, uh, those are things you have to think about before you do so. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy. Just be sure to not skip any steps or else you'll have to drive back and forth a thousand times uh, to fix stuff. And one last thing, uh, the camera and filter wheel we have on the rig right now, we do not own. So we might have to send it back at any point. Uh, so if you do want to help out, um, we had some issues this year. I'll explain everything in the, in the link, but if you want to, you can go in the link below and help us keep this uh, camera, which is very important to us. And uh, yeah. so I'll see you guys next time. And I cannot wait to share the full video about installing the rig there and see the first light from the amazing dark skies of Utah. So I'll see you guys next time and clear skies.
In here you can see the full rig that will be installed at the observatory. And on the very last night testing out the telescope uh, in the backyard, something really cool happened. A rocket launch from SpaceX just flew over Las Vegas and passed right behind the telescope, which is a nice goodbye to this rig from the backyard.